Hello, hello! Welcome to the video you all have been waiting for. This is the Double Gung Dao Bay Brewing video. Finally. So, for those of you who don't know, when I brew my greens and yellows, I always use two Gung Dao Bays. I never use a Gaiwan, and of course, I sometimes just use a glass. So, today I'm going to go into how this is done, how I do it, and some trip, some ticks some tips and tricks to bring your double gung dao bread brewing to the next level. Today I'm going to be using a very special tea. This is the Huang Ya, the Huoshan Huang Ya. This is available on the website. This tea is being offered by me and One River Tea. The wonderful gentlemen at One River Tea are offering this tea as part of an amazing sampler pack, a yellow tea sampler pack where they put this tea and other yellow teas together so that you really understand what yellow tea means and what a good yellow tea is and what a bad yellow tea is. This is a very highly recommended sampler pack. I'll put it in the link below. For those of you who have had this tea and just want it by the ounce, I, off I offer it by the ounce. It is a very, very limited quality. This is all I have left. So if you want it by the ounce, definitely jump on this. So. To start off with double gong dao bay brewing, we are going to cool the water, which I just dropped something. This is my favorite shape to use. This will be on the website soon. Another thing I've talked a lot about doing. I like this because it's a very clear line where you should fill it up to. And I just like and I like this little nose. So right now we're just passing the water back and forth. This is simply just a way to cool the water off. You can let the water just sit and let it cool off that way, but this is a little faster and a little more fun. Water temperature should be about 85 degrees. Um, different teas actually will get a slight variation depending on the leaf. Gua Pian, Ho Kui, you can kind of push kind of toward 90. Bilo Chun, um, you want to drop down a little bit more because Gua Pian is a bigger leaf, Ho Kui is a bigger leaf, Bilo Chun is smaller and more delicate. For a long time, I don't actually usually weigh my, I don't actually usually measure my temperature via a number. What I like to do is I like to feel the glass. The glass should be a temperature where the water, the glass is uncomfortable to touch, but you can keep your fingers there for a little bit. So actually right now it's still a little too hot. I can't really hold my finger there for that long. So another good benefit to pouring it back and forth is that right now this glass is very hot. Well, not very hot, but this glass is hot and it's going to make smelling the dry leaves much easier. Mmm, it's good. Egg yolks, kind of that egg yolky thickness and sweetness. So not egg yolks, eh, more the egg whites, maybe just eggs. Egg whites, eh, no yolk, because it kind of has a bit of a fattiness to it. The vegetalness is kind of mossy, but that kind of nice soft boggy moss. Not really that like thick, moldy moss, kind of that nice softer, more vegetal moss. A little bit of sweet corn in there. I find sweet corn is a very, very common flavor note for yellow teas. Today we're also using my handmade Buddha cup. This is another cup that's on the website. Uh, interesting thing about this cup, this cup is completely handmade to the point when I bought a few, I bought three of them. And when I bought them, the maker said, he was just like, look, this is handmade. They are not going to be the same. They're all going to be variations. And I thought that was a very, very cool thing for him to say. It is a little rough, so it's not a usual use for yellow teas and green teas, but I'm going to let it go. You can see now I can kind of hold it. I can kind of put my fingers to it. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you're feeling for temperature, the 
the glass is going to be a little bit hotter than the water. And so there's a little bit of delay in heat movement. So, the double gong dao bei style is a style that uses a lot, uses all of your senses. You saw his feeling for temperature, that's optional. Um, but a big one is going to be sight. With the double gong dao bei brewing, as opposed to a gai wan, you're going to be judging when to pour the teas based on how they look and how they smell. So when you first drop the teas in, they're going to look just like dried leaves. They're going to look dry. When you pour the second, when you pour the first steep is when they lose that dry look. When they start looking moist, they start looking wet, and when they start kind of opening up, you don't want them to be dropping. That's going to be kind of in that second steep. The biggest difference I have found, because I have tried Gaiwan brewing, and the, difference, the biggest difference I have found flavor-wise is that with the Gong Dao Bei, you get four steeps, but you get four full steeps, full more developed flavors. With the Gai Wan, you get more steeps, but compared to the Gong Dao Bei steeps, they don't seem as full. They seem kind of quick snaps, quick pictures almost, and not really that full picture. You see I'm smelling, we're going to talk about that more a little bit later, smelling. Leaves are starting to drop a little bit, so I'm going to get, I'm going to ready to pour soon. And a lot of this is going to be, double gong dao bei brewing definitely is a skill. There definitely is practice to really get to figure out the teas and figure out when to pour. But as once you get used to it, once you get used to it basically, and you get into the process, I find it to be, it's a much more interactive brewing than a guy one. So here is a test of pouring, which I'm not doing particularly good at. So as you notice, I'm not using a filter for no other particular reason than, eh. But, um, but you can actually pour the tea, you can pour the tea from here to here without getting leaves into here if you keep a steady hand. If your hand is unsteady and the pour rate is faster than slower, faster than slower, that's when leaves are gonna come out. But if you keep that pour rate steady, the leaves are going to pumpkin, pumpkin, don't take it to the wall. The leaves are going to, um, the leaves are going to stay in the cup. So as you see, I did an okay job. Very important. Very, very important. Um, very important. This is a... Leaving the tea leaves submerged is gong is drinking green tea. This is and, and I'm trying to find the right words to say this, but you see this in multiple reasons regions. The you can think of the double gong dao bei pouring as a where a version of grandpa style meant for sharing. It's the same idea, except instead of just drinking it, we are first pouring it into the second container so now that we can share. But, just like in grandpa style, we're always leaving the leaves submerged. This is across tea regions, and this is just kind of, in green tea regions, this is just kind of standard, it's fact. You don't dump out the water. I remember one time I had just a thermos of cheap tea, I was going to class, and I, and I was running low on water, and I stopped by a deli, a little corner store, where they sell candies and fruits, just to ask for some water. And there's a nice lady, older general, older lady behind the counter, and I asked her some water, and she goes, yes, but don't pour out the water you have. And she, she <laughs> was just very, she's like, don't, don't pour it out, just add more, don't pour out your water. And you know, this woman who just was not in the tea industry whatsoever, um, she was very clear that I could not pour out my water, because you don't. You don't pour out your water, you don't pour out, in, you don't pour out your water 
uh, in grandpa style, you don't pour out your water here until you are completely done and you're getting fresh leaves. Why not? There's two reasons. Reason one is that this is going to keep the leaves from oxidizing. This is a little more important in grandpa style where when you get down here, it may be a while before you refill it, especially if you're like a cab driver. Uh, but also if you're doing the double gong dao bay style and you're drinking with a lot of people, you know, maybe it's going to take 20 minutes to drink all of this because you're talking and you're having a good time. And you don't want those leaves to start drying out, to start oxidizing um, in that time. The main reason, though, is going to come when we pour the next steep. And we're going to get to that in a minute. I'm using my Buddha cup. Using the Buddha cup is a little strange, I'm not going to lie. The texture is throwing me off. It's really refreshing though. Really sweet, really bright. Sorry, my phone is pinging. Okay. Sorry. Way? No. Way? Huh? Way? So. Another interesting to notice, I'm, I'm pouring out here just because I want to move this along, get to the next deep. Another thing to notice is um, we didn't rinse. We didn't rinse. We just started drinking. So, notice how short this steep is going to be. Notice a couple things. First things first, this is the second steep. Notice how the leaves are open now and they are beginning to drop. There is still a lot of emptiness at the bottom. They're not dropping all the way to the bottom, but they're starting to come down. That's the second steep. See if I can pour this a little more. As the leaves open up, pouring without a filter will be easier and easier. Because the leaves will kind of just catch on each other. Getting all those extra. Notice how fast that second brew was. Water went in and we poured right away. That's because this is still brewing. Right here at the bottom, this is still brewing. If I drink this now, and I do sometimes like to drink it, it is strong, it is bitter. When we add more water, we're almost equalizing that in a way. We're diluting it a little bit and allowing it to brew a little bit more because it's not gonna be fully brewed. Um, but this is gonna cut those next steep times much, much shorter. That's really good. Yellow tea just has this thickness. It's very similar thickness to whole, uh, whole no, malfung, whole goo is what I was thinking. Very similar thickness to whole goo and that savory richness. But it, but it shows you a little more characteristics. You know, the, that savoriness is more of an aspect of the tea and not kind of the whole tea, like it is sometimes for Mao Feng. Yellow tea, it's savory. The flavors are more forward, more frontal. They're a little more bold, a little more oomph to them. Um, there is a little less complexity, but it is just a little thicker. So now we're going to get into a little tip and trick. So I will often talk about the buck style. The buck style was 
created by a friend of mine named Buck. Um, and the Buck style is great for, it's, it was created and it works best really for savory teas. Mao Feng, Ho, sorry, Mao Feng, Huang Ya, and Yun Wu, the savory thick teas, but can be really used for any green tea or yellow tea. What we're going to do for the Buck style That's even a little more than I wanted. We're going to use less water. In fact, I probably would, if, I, if a true buck style would have probably stopped about there. And what the buck style is just going to do is going to just take that all that flavor and condense it even more. And this is a very, very good way for exploring savory teas, Ho Kui, Yun Wu, Huang Ya, because it's going to take that savoriness and just make it so much thicker, so much richer, so much more bold. Bold. It's going to make it bolder. This is really great for those of you who have a good mouth fung, but you're not quite understanding the savoriness. It's just going to turn that up. Mm. Much more hearty, much more full soup, broth. That is yellow tea. For the sake of time, I am just going to rinse. So this is my monkey head tea pet. I broke my monkey tea pet, so now I just use the head. Okay, so this is the third steep. I know it's buck style, so it's really a little hard to see. But the third steep is the leaves are completely open. They're full, they're showing off their beauty, and they're everywhere. There's still some floating at the top, but there's that some at the bottom now. There isn't that gap of empty anymore. They're all over, they're in the middle. Come here. Sorry, my dog is digging at the wall. Hey, hey! Yeah, I know, we'll take you out after this. Um, this is a steep where you really, really want to use your sense of smell. Because the leaves are so open, you can't really judge it by the amount of dropping, like in the first and second steep. This is when we want to just smell it, smell it, smell it, and when it has that flavor we want, then pour. I got a little lazy on that one. The dog's a little distracting. Still leaving some at the bottom. And for the sake of time, I am going to get into the last steep, and just so we can talk about the last steep. I'm not going to do the buck method for this, just for visual clarity. So we're going to, we're going to talk about the last steep in a second. So the first steep is the softest steep. The leaves haven't fully opened up. They're kind of starting to show their stuff. The second steep is the strongest steep. They really start. They've opened up. They're really starting to show their power. The third steep is the most is considered the best steep. It is the leaves are the most centered. The flavor is the most centered. You know, so the leaf the flavor has gone up and then it's kind of hit that point. Like it's comfortable. The last steep is going to be softer. You know, the leaves have spent. There's still some left, but they're spent. I do not recommend yellow and... I, well, let me not say that. I do not like yellow and green teas in earthware cups. So, now let's talk about the last steep. So we've judged all these steeps on how much the leaf is dropping. On this last steep, we're going to let it drop all the way. And this is a steep where you can really let it sit. Um, it's interesting to note that, it's important to note that throughout the steeps, because in between, because in each steep, the amount of water, or the amount, uh, the size of the leaves got bigger and bigger and bigger as they opened up, the amount of water at the bottom, the amount we leave left, actually does get a little more and more and more. And so that means that this is going to be, and it's, we're getting kind of into details here, 
But this deep is going to have the coolest water because it has, it is, how do I say this? Because there was m the most amount of water left at the bottom, it had the, when we added more water, it was able to counteract, counteract the hot water the most. As opposed, as opposed to, let's say, the second steep, when there's only maybe half of this, when we added more water, it could only cool down the water so much. So we're starting off here with the coolest water. This last steep does have the coolest water. And there are two ways to think about this. There's two ways to kind of think about the playing with the water here. One of it means we can add, this is when we can add the hottest water. You know, for this last steep, if we really want to bring out flavors, we can add boiling or close to boiling water because it's going to be automatically, it's going to be brought down the most and because the leaves are the most spent. So actually a hotter water might be more beneficial for you just to really pour out that flavor. The other thing to think about, otherwise we can think about timing. You know, this is a steep where we can actually leave it here the longest. So as we're getting into these different, um, as we get into Gong Dao Bei Buing, there's actually quite a bit of complexity there. And of course, for the final steep, my pouring is the worst, my pouring is terrible. You should not have leaves at the bottom, that is not the goal. But now we pour out everything. Look at the leaves, smell the leaves, enjoy the leaves. And there it is, brought to you from my living room, Gong Dao Bei Brewing. I hope you enjoyed it.